This episode is brought to you by Camille Najat with Exit Realty Metro. Camille Najat is an experienced real estate agent who prides herself in finding the perfect home for her clients. Camille can help you with a comparative market analysis to help determine the value of your home if you're planning on selling, or help you determine the going rate for the neighborhood you're moving into. She can also work with you at your pace. You can reach Camille by calling 902-880-8429 or email Camille at exitmetro.ca. Also, you can find her on Facebook at Camille Najat, Exit Realty Metro. This is Matt Conrad. And this is Mike Tobin. Welcome to the Afternoon Pint. This week we speak with Terry Gula. Terry is a transgender speaker and educator, freelance photographer, actor turned aspiring director, and a whole lot more. Big thanks to Good Robot Brewing for the excellent beer and for allowing us to record this episode. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. There you go. Welcome to the Afternoon Pint. I'm Mike Tobin. I am Matt Conrad. And, and today we have Terry Coolin, who's examining her first drink. <laughs> Which one's that called? This is Ooh. the lager. It's the lager. It's the lager. I think, oh, you didn't do the lager. Oh, okay, no. I, well, I, I haven't even touched one yet, so which one's the lager? He wanted this to get one? the sour over with. That's what yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the lager's uh, right up here. This guy. So yeah. what's this one called? That's the, I don't know, it's their lager. Okay. I, name I think it's called the 10K Pilsner. Nope. No? That's a different one. Oh, jeepers. So Maybe I have a different beer. You, no, you have the 10K Pilsner. It's true. Well, I okay. also have the 10K Pilsner. But, yeah. All right, I'll have a 10K Pilsner. So, just we're to address robot. it, we're, we're <laughs> here at Good Robot, and we are doing a taster uh, on what appears to be Ouija boards, and <laughs> we uh, we just told them to surprise us. So uh, we are essentially having one beer just divided up in multiple different ways. So, That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, so our special guest today is uh, Miss Terry Coolen. Little introduction, uh, how I know Terry. Ten years ago, was it ten years ago, you think? Yeah, she could have been. Okay, ten, ten-ish years ago, I was trying to learn how to do theater for the very first time, and for the very first time trying acting, and met Terry there, who mentored me, always just kind of gave me friendly encouragement, very positive vibes, and I totally appreciated it. Uh, years later, I'm not doing that stuff anymore now, personally. Uh, but uh, doing a podcast. I noticed Terry on LinkedIn, who, who had been on LinkedIn as, as, a, as a personal contact for years, and now that Terry had uh, changed uh, genders and uh, is now Miss Terry Cool, and when it was Mr. Terry Cool, and who acted with in uh, Twelve Angry Men so many years ago. So, really, I just wanted to to learn a bit about you and your story. I think it's awesome that you're living your best life, and if this you're happy, we're happy for you. I'm happy for thank you. you. Yeah. Thank and, you. And uh, yeah, just kind of kick it off at that. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. And you said uh, was a mentor. I was probably more like a tormentor. I would think. Well, maybe a bit of a tormentor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, he needs a little bit of that. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you should talk about acting. Uh, acting really was um, a great outlet for me to not have to be me. Mm, sure, yeah. Uh, so it was something that I always enjoyed because I could get out of my own head. Um, my story probably begins, probably I was, I know I was at least four years old that I knew I was different. Four years old. Four okay. years old. Yeah. yeah. You know, people ask, well, how did you know? Well, how do you know you're right or left handed? I right. just knew. Right. And I, before you even go any further, I got to say that what I'm talking about is my journey. I don't represent no, no, you know, the masses of anybody. This is just me. Really yeah. Talk about today, yes. So that's cool. So I knew back then, but I also, I didn't have a name for it. Yeah. I just knew that I, I was different and I just did not feel comfortable having to be the boy. So, uh, but I also knew that at that point in time, I could never tell anybody. It became my deep, dark secret that I eventually became so good at, at suppressing and hiding that I literally forgot about it. Or tried to. Terry, I remember, was like, no, you actually, in 12 Angry Men, the role you played was a dude's dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was the he was the man. He was the leading man of that show. Right? No, <laughs> he was the grumpy, grouchy, I've had enough of this shit kind of guy, right? In the yeah. sports and everything, you know, like, yeah, exactly. I gotta want to get to the ball game, you know, so. Yeah, cigar out the mouth kind of, kind of character, right? Yeah, so it's amazing that it I changed. still like cigars, I just don't smoke them. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of the same there, actually. I like cigars, too, but I don't smoke them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get a good cookie by anywhere. So. Fair enough. So, um, I, it, really, when you say acting was a way of kind of uh, 
uh, move an outlet. Like, do you feel that you like, do you feel that that's what you what drew you to acting is because you kind of almost felt like you had to act like something you weren't your whole life? Or? I think so. Like, I do I do talks on my journey just because I want people to be aware that you know this is. This is common. It's common for a lot. Our, our stories are different, but it's the theme is, is common. And um, I, I tell people I was a full time actor, not the type of actor you'd see on film or stage. Right. But yeah. I was an actor playing a version of myself that I felt needed to be presented to everybody. Hmm. So, in keeping with that, because I became so good at acting, Terry with a Y, I'm now Terry with an I uh, legally, uh, that. Uh, Everything I said and did had to go through a filter. Mm -hmm. So if I was talking to you, I was talking about any type of sports, it would have to go through my filter. What can I cannot say that might reveal my true nature? Right. And this is on a subconscious level, so after a while, I get pretty good at doing that. Yeah. And like in those early days, uh, not even early days, but did you ever kind of low-key try to, you know, just wear heels or try to, like, experiment and stuff? I I did. And, you know, being a, you know, very felt, what is wrong with me? Right. You know, it was an outlet. In fact, it was uh, something that would calm me. My whole life, I just always was fixated towards it. I'm fixated. I couldn't understand why it would help me calm down. Hmm. You know, and then you'd feel the guilt afterwards. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Yeah. Yeah. So you live with that a lot. Um, Was there ever guilt of like suppressing it too? No, I was really good at suppressing the fact that I knew I was a trans transgender person. Uh, In fact, I I would probably just say I hate the fact that I cross dress. (laughs) Hate it. Hate it. You know, because there's a. You're always worried that it might slip out if you've been drinking or something. So it's, it's you're living your life, right. living a lie. Mm-hmm. And uh, you live a lie to survive. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really have, like, um, like we didn't have the word trans until really in the last, like, decade. You didn't hear it a lot. No, right? gosh. Uh, there's a lot of other words that are now some, you know, some are considered derogatory. But... Um, we, we, you know, with the, you said cross dressing, like that was like a kind of a label that they would put on there, and then it turned to other different things, right, and other different names. So it's you've seen a lot of evolution of of you know how you felt and the label that people put on it, I guess. So it would, yeah, I can only imagine how complicated that is because I know the uh, the common question that comes up is how can you like how can you know what it feels like to be a woman. Just listen to you here, like, and I'll let you answer that, but also listen to hear you talk. It seems that it almost starts, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it almost seems like it starts with not like, I know I'm a woman, but I just, I'm not comfortable with who I am to, like, quote, unquote, supposed to be, kind of thing. I tell a lot of my friends that, you know, if you never questioned your gender, consider yourself lucky. Because um, there's a yeah. lot of angst and a right. lot of deep thinking and a right. lot of... You know what's wrong with me? Why don't am I not conforming with society? So yeah, and I, I mean, and I think that's probably why people fear it because they don't question it, right? Sometimes, you know, if you think about it, because I never really questioned it. So when you don't, you, you're my own gender, mm-hmm. and uh, that just makes me probably not understand what somebody else is going through. Uh, uh, simply yeah. put, right? How can I understand something that I'm not experiencing? Right. It's true. And maybe you're not meant to understand it. I think what right. what needs to be said is it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, it just right. matters what type of person you are. And you yeah. know, respecting everybody, just letting people be who they are. I think and as, yeah. as a result, that's what I have tattooed on my forearm. What's that say? I to can't. thine own self be true. Ah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and that should appeal to everyone. It should. Right? It should. But there's a lot of... Um, a lot of miscommunication. Uh, a lot of people don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of fear involved because if you don't understand, you're going to be fearful of what you don't yeah, know. Right. So that's what I like to do. I like to tell people, yeah, this is me. You know, I'm just a regular person. The only thing that's changed is maybe my appearance and my legal name. Right. Um, I was born Terrence Raymond, and I legally changed to Terry Ray. Mm. So it's... It's kind of funny. And I tell people, I said, I kept the name hmm. Terry because a lot of times when it comes to trans friends that I have, they they start to use pronouns and names hmm. that make them feel 
more at home with who they are. Right. And also gives the people around them an opportunity to accept and understand who they are. So um, growing up, in it, inevitably I would get like a birthday card or a present. It would be addressed to Terry with an I. And I'd have to pretend that I hated it. Oh my gosh, how dare you? I'm Terry with a Y, I'm Terry with an I. <laughs> and inside I was just like, oh, this is so amazing. Huh. And, you know, my joke is now, when you call me Terry, I want you to say it with an I, because if you say it with a Y, I will know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, so, so, obviously, like, yeah, Terry felt home to you, I guess, the, the name that you were given sort of slightly altered. Yeah. 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 I guess, yeah, we can kind of go back uh, to, like, uh, and kind of let you uh, talk out some of the things that I kind of asked before about like that process of because i think that is like kind of a privilege what like for for like us like we were saying like i'm a white straight male and you're right i think that's like i think the biggest key is like that's what people like i think struggle with privilege a little bit is like Mm. they think like you know you're privileged so like i'm you're rich or something right and it's just simply the fact that i don't have to ask myself i don't have to question or struggle with that right um and, and and i think you touched on something as well as just being kind, you don't re- you don't need to know or understand the what people like, who they are, how they choose to live their life. Just be kind. Be you kind. Know? Yeah. Like, as long as you're not hurting nobody, why not? Right. Yeah. Like, that's you know? it. Yeah. 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 Like, that's I don't understand me. Pokemon. I don't understand people <laughs> that like Pokemon. You never played the app. You yeah. But Pokemon. no, I never did. And you know what? But it it like cool. Just be kind, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I know I, I guess that's kind of uh, the biggest thing that I can hammer home is because I've gone on a, I guess a little bit of a journey myself trying to figure out where like you know when a lot of this kind of came out I'm like I don't understand yeah right mm. and it may take forever to understand but I think the other key is is learning to accept yourself you know we all accept our limitations but it's really about accepting who you are and, and loving yourself and being kind to yourself. And these are the things I never could do before cool. because I was so wrapped up in being an actor for everyone. Do you feel happier now? Oh, tremendously happier. That's amazing. That's good. Yeah. Which is just, and I think when you meet, but I'm going to tell you, I'm happy because I've been very fortunate to have a lot of supportive people. I tell people that I thrive right. because the people in my life yeah. that accept me for who I am. Yeah. That see beyond what they actually can visually see and, yeah. and see the person inside. Um, and, and, and I mean, no disrespect to this, you're not doing this at a super young age either, right? Like, you know, this is a little later in life. I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to guess your age. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> older than me. I'm older than you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just leave it at that. Well, uh, but but yeah. So it's like um, you know, this. I, I, it's nice to be in a world now where folks are just starting to. You know, it is, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that are happening that are going against that. Yeah, Yeah. Um, it's you. People talk about trans kids, trans kids. I was a trans kid. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know at the time I was a trans kid, but I was a trans kid, and I waited till 2018 before I came out. Yeah, and And I was in my 50s. You could kind of see kids at a young age that that are different, right? For sure. But the other thing uh, to keep in mind is remember that. you know your 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 gender is is who you go to bed as right. your sexuality is who you go to bed with right so yeah. those two are I different like and different. a lot of people like see them as being That's the same but they're not yeah. yeah i like that because they are obviously two very different things but they kind of get jammed in together because of the acronyms yeah I wonder if that's been a service or not i don't know uh in terms of like kind of having that group I guess, like, gender and sexuality together. I don't know if that has... Do you feel like that maybe has helped? Or, like, you know, because obviously, you know, it was almost 20 years ago now that uh, same-sex marriage became legal in Canada. Uh, Do you feel that those who have come before where acceptance was gained has helped pull along? Or do you feel that it hasn't? Like, do you feel like almost like grouping the two together has kind of been like, I don't know, I think divisive in a way. It could depend upon where you live. I, yeah. I think that the one thing that is universal with with most of the two uh, SLBGDQIA plus people um, 
is they are true to themselves. Mm. Mm. And that's probably the most common thing. And there's a, such a relief when you can actually be yourself openly. Uh, and it's not about you know, getting people to want to join the club. It's just about, hey, yeah. this is who I am. I tell people that the Terry they knew was the tip of the iceberg. Mm. Now that iceberg is turned so the the yeah. large portion is the part that's exposed. So people are seeing more of me. Yeah. Or, or who I am. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting to talk about, like I said, I've known my whole life. Uh, I suppressed it a lot. And it wasn't until 2015 I was on a photo tour to Iceland. Uh, I was drawn to Iceland. Photo tour for what? Uh, just doing just photography, yeah. Okay. I've, I've got a wonderful cousin who arranges uh, photographic tours to Iceland, oh, Scotland, cool. Oh, cool. Nepal. So. Yeah. Uh, at that point in time, I was uh, was working, had some good money in hand, and she said, "Hey, why don't you come to Iceland? You like photography?" So I went to Iceland, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. I, mean, I was there for a couple of weeks, and the sights I saw, and I liked it so much that I was drawn to go back. So mm -hmm. four months later, I went back, and what I realized is being exposed to this beautiful, breathtaking landscape, it made me feel insignificant. Huh. I mean, this gorgeous this gorgeous scenery had been there for thousands of years, millions of years, mm -hmm. and it'll be there long after I'm dead and gone. So I remember it was September 30th, which was my birthday. I was standing at the uh, Godafoss, which is the waterfall of the gods, and mm -hmm. I was just standing there just in awe and feeling very small and insignificant and thinking about what my legacy would be, you know, when I die. I'm not rich. I don't have kids. Right. And it was so strange. This tiny voice whispered into my ear and said, do you want to die without anybody ever truly knowing who you are? Mm. Oh. And I, you know, so I took a moment, I go, WTF, what was that? Yeah. Mm. And then the thought came back, I said, you know, do you want to die without anybody ever knowing who you are? Mm -hmm. And that day I remember that little tiny little thought, that fragment, it was probably my, my younger self, my four-year-old self, saying, this is who you are, your deep, dark secret. This is who it is, it, it, who you are. So it, it lingered in my brain for months. And, you know, the more it was there, it was kind of like, you know, the more it was there, the more I couldn't get it out of my mind. You try not to think about something, so therefore you think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I tell people it was almost like a splinter had become lodged in my brain. Yeah. yeah. So I finally had to go inward and say, okay, what's going on with this? Why am I feeling this way? And, you know, through a lot of self-reflection, I just realized that I had been lying to myself and everybody in my life. And if I ever wanted to leave a legacy, the only legacy I'm ever going to leave is how I made other people feel. Yeah, for sure. And I can't do that if I don't like myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, uh, knowing uh, the old Terry, you always made people feel good. You always made people laugh, no <laughs> matter you. what character you were playing. You. Uh, you were You were funny. You, you did. A, I remember you did a comedy where you played a Spanish... Um, uh, full flea in her ear, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it was hilarious. You could have watched that and not laugh. I care yeah. who you were. People were crying laughing within ten minutes. It was, it was, it was well. Brilliant. There was a director that I just didn't get along with the director. Yeah, he was his, his name, yeah. Mike uh, Mike <laughs> Tobin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so what what year was that again? Sorry, that you went. Well, to I kind of came out to myself in 2015, standing okay, in front of this waterfall, this gorgeous waterfall. Um, and then the journey was, okay, how do I start to tell people right. about this? So I slowly began to tell people that were close to me, you know, I, you know, I think I'm trans, I am trans. And um, uh, it wasn't until 2018 that I decided to come out publicly. So at the Theatre Arts Guild, they were doing a, um, a uh, variety night. And I said, well, I'm just going to get up and talk about myself. Yeah, and so that's where and you did that all on your own. Did you have a yeah. support, like a friend or like a family member that you kind of confided in with all this stuff, or did you have anyone? I did, I did. Um, there's one person in particular. Yeah. Uh, she's my my best friend in the world. Her name is, is Pamela, and uh, I couldn't be here and be successful if it hadn't been for her. But also, I've got two beautiful sisters that are very supportive. Nice. Uh, and they each have daughters who I love, and they're just an amazing group. I'm going to tell you, when I came out to my one of my sisters, um, she looked at me and she said, I'll expect more of you now. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess but, there's a lot of pressure to that. When you say, like, hey, I wasn't being my full self. It's like, well, potential just went up, eh? Well, I think the other thing is you, you do not realize until you've actually 
lived in that, how much more responsibility is put on other genders. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you just don't see it as mm. a white cis male. You may think you are, but until you actually live it, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, you know, for things things that we would take for granted earlier, like if you want to go out for a run at night. Right. Oh, yes. Can't do that. Yeah, right. yeah. We, I got to be careful getting on an elevator. I got to be careful parking my car underground. Yeah. You know, who's on the escalator? These are the things that I never, ever, and it was almost like, you know, use the analogy of waking up from the matrix right. and yeah. seeing what the, the world really truly is like. Yeah. And it's a world that women have lived in their entire lives. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was fun too. I came out, I remember I came out to, uh, I came out at the work I was working at, and my supervisor said, are you going to wear dresses now? Hmm. So I looked at him, I said, no, I'm not transitioning to wear dresses. I'm doing it for the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole complication. I mean, you know, at first I didn't know what to put in purses. I didn't know how to buy clothes. You know, buying women's clothes is like... When I reached out to you for the first time in 10 years, my first, like, our initial conversation, I think I asked you about 10 or 15 minutes in, I was like, are you going to do stand-up? Oh. I am working on some things. That's uh, my passion, and I just yeah. know you'd be great at it. Well, thank you. Then you're going to be my mentor, and I'll run it all by you. And sure. You give me the well, you funny send, meter. You, you can send your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll look at every one of them. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think one of the things that I'm really blessed is the fact that I have a great sense of humor. I got it from my mom and my dad. They both yeah. were really quite funny. Yeah, and quick. Um, yeah, I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm quick, but I'm not as sarcastic as I used to be. No? I don't have to be. <laughs> because you know I'm not hurting. Sure. For yeah. me, sarcasm right. was my my shield, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I do want to try a stand up. I think mm. there's a lot of funny things that happen in life, and yeah. why not share? And, yeah. and and do you consider doing theater again? Well, I actually had the the privilege to be in a uh, a play yeah. uh, last year, and it was um, a play that was written by a, a local playwright. It's called uh, Mrs. Walford, and uh, I got to play a a doctor from the 19th century who's helping somebody with a um a, a drug addiction okay um to morphia or morphia as they called it back in the 19th century oh, okay and it has its roots at the uh, the carlton hotel here in halifax mm -hmm. oh uh, so part one was written by brenda tideminers she wrote the entire play so part one um took place in halifax and then two years later uh which was the last ball Part two took place in um, New York City, where I was a doctor helping a patient with a, a morphia addiction. So oh, wow. I did get to go on stage. Cool. Uh, like you, I think I've got more interest in directing now. But Oh, yeah. Great. We will see. Yeah, she definitely should. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, how uh, I, I see, just again from LinkedIn, uh, you're doing some public speaking? I, I do. Um, I, I like to, like I said, I like to inform. I like to, to talk to people about my journey and talk about different things um that they might not be exposed to mm. uh in well these conversations are i mean so helpful yeah. probably to so many people they are right? yeah and, and again i gotta say as long as you can be supportive yeah. that's what what everyone needs everyone needs to be yeah. supportive but in this day and age right now yeah trans non-binary they just need to be accepted for who they are right and sometimes yeah. i think if you just picture that person do you, do you want them off the earth what do you want right like you know because you miss people when they're gone you know and it's, if uh, you know even if you have at odds with what you might personally believe or think if the option is not having that person in 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 your life or in the world you think probably that's important miss them very much i if, i had someone say that to me when yeah. you know, i got into a light debate with someone yeah. and they asked me they said well how would you feel if your son I have a two-year-old son and how would you feel if your two if your if your son whatever age came to you and said well I feel like a girl right and I so honestly I said with the with the suicide rates that exist in the LGBT community I said to him I looked right I looked right now and just said I'd rather him be a girl versus a boy than not be here so I said I'll support him through whatever he needs to work through because that's what matters most to me mm -hmm. is that I might have a relationship with my kid, yeah. right? Yeah. So, maybe, yeah, maybe with all this madness going on today and we, we, we get to a place where people just 
get on to the next challenge. Right. Well, it's, and that's, it's, that's what I'd love to see. I feel like my mind is already made up on this. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm cool with it all. And it's like, uh, we have way, way bigger, scarier issues on our planet yeah. that we need to, that There's we need to truth. fight next and we need to be together, uh, uh, all of us to do, to fix those problems. Right. I mean, but we're not there. No. No. And I, I saw it was an Instagram a post and I was talking about, may you never live your life you have to worry about your rights being taken away with an upcoming federal election. Oh, and may you yeah, never experience yeah. the pain mm. of seeing your friends and loved ones vote for an organization that wants to remove your rights. Yeah. Mm. And that's where we're at, yeah. unfortunately. It's scary. It is scary. Yeah. You know, it, people have so many issues, like the pronouns thing. That really, like, for me, as I was going from where I was... And where I wanted to be, mm. you know, I, you know, I consider myself a white cis male for many years, so sure, he yeah. am. Yeah. Uh, and there was a transitional period where I went with they, them, I, because I was on my journey. I hadn't reached my destination. So right. I use the yeah. analogy, and it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm in Nova Scotia, he, him. Yeah. You know, I want to get to Newfoundland, she, her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm right now in Cape Breton, they, them. <laughs> okay. And just, it's it's the journey of, of where I was. And then yeah. people go, well, they, them is not a regular, you know. That's what we were taught in school, but it's wrong. And, okay. I, and I, for instance, if I was to leave my, my, my phone somewhere, I'm sure the people that pick it up said, oh, someone someone forgot their phone. Right. I exactly. hope they come pick it up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or if you think about the other thing about, I don't want to call you, you know, she, her, that's not right. Yeah. But come over, see my boat. She's a beauty. Yeah. Right. No, you know what? You're, you're, yeah. Those are a lot of the things that I kind of said. It's like, like, oh, they went to the store, mm-hmm. right? It, they is a singular in the English language. Like, all of a sudden people started thinking that it wasn't for some reason. Well, that's what we were taught, you know. In the, but it is all the time. It, is. It, is, it has been for as long as English. They, them is singular. Shakespeare in, used it. Exactly. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of authors that have used they, them. I, I also kind of feel like, I think society has done uh, this a uh, little bit of damage in the sense that we're gender obsessed with inanimate objects i think that's another thing that kind of has like screwed with people's heads mm-hmm. a little bit um because it's like you know it's like oh well, if you're a boy you like sports and trucks mm-hmm. and stuff like that okay, and if you're okay. a girl yeah. you like this and, the, and and like they label things and and make things uh gender binary type of thing and i think that's what kind of like makes society a little bit hard to get over mm. certain things. That's well, ingrained in marketing. That's ingrained in It, it I, is, oh, 100%. It's, it's, yeah. it's, we're going to drive home tonight. We're going to see nine billboards telling <laughs> us what a man likes, telling us what a woman likes. Right. Tell yeah. us what your dog likes. To quote and, my uh, cousin who, who invited me to <laughs> yeah. Iceland twice, she said, labels are for soup cans. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I think as humans, we're so, we got to label it. Yeah. Got to analyze it. Got to put it in some kind of pigeonhole. Sure. Right. So what did you, so so there's obviously a, a trans like there's three years between like you know having this realization of yourself uh, or at least being honest I guess with yourself um, and and then coming out to everyone um, what did, what steps did you do to kind of like take of those steps along the way over three years to kind of work your way to that it was very interesting i think at first i i started keeping a list of everybody i told i thought i could control the narrative oh yeah not realizing that it's kind of like trying to control a wildfire in the backyard mm-hmm. uh so i would be very specific at first this is how i did i would be specific to people i know who would be open mm-hmm. and i call them the stars because i know if i come out to them they're going to be accepting no matter what sure but there were also isolates, and those are the people that had been such a big part of my life that I was afraid. Right. I felt that with my sisters at first. Yeah. I felt that with a, a childhood friend who I'd grown yeah. up, um, with my my ex wife. Sure some people when they when they they, they just very much just be too much to deal with. Right? Yeah. For whatever reason. Well, yeah, right? but you know, and, again, uh, you you've got to yeah. have a leap of faith too. But it's yeah. hard to do that in society now. Yeah. Sure. Did so, anyone surprise you? You know, I <laughs> probably the best reaction I had was from a, a friend of mine who I came out to him. I said, you know, Les, I'm, I'm, I'm trans. Mm. Um, 
And he said, well, that's cool. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that perfect? But I mean, I, I kind of feel like that's where we need to be, though. That's where we, we, that's, that's we, right. we need to be. Well, I had another friend, yeah. and he said, um, yeah. he said, are you sure this is what you want to do? I go, yeah. And then he says to me, well, what about your balls? <laughs> and I thought, I thought, why do, do, you, do you want why, them? <laughs> why do you want to know about my... And I asked him, I said... Before I answer that, why do you want to know? So I don't care. I said, well, that's what we call a microaggression. You do not ask anybody about their operation or right, if they're yeah. going to have the operation. It oh, shouldn't okay. matter, you know? I didn't even know where that was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, so, but that was one of the reactions that I got. I had a lot of people, Mike, as yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a joke. Sure, sure. So when I first came out, some people were waiting for the punchline. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, kid? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it. I guess that that's uh, one of the things of being a jokester where it could backfire on you a little bit. But yeah, yeah. Well, I had to be. I mean, I always enjoy making people laugh, and I think I see the world through a funny lens. I think it's important. Have to. I think yeah. it's important. It's on the way to live. Yeah, I I, I agree. On yeah. the way to live. If yeah. you're not laughing, you know, it's great. It's a crazy world. Every day. It, you're gonna be crazy. able to laugh at yourself too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think it brings people together, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, there's there's things, and but it's about relationships, right? Uh, there's things that I can say to f- close friends of mine that I would never say to strangers, but they, you know, they know my heart. They know who I am as a person, and they'll do. They'll feed it right back to me in certain things, right? Of course, yeah. So it's about relationships and and knowing. Um, like if you knew you were safe with someone, you can joke around about certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So sorry. Yeah. There, you, there was things. I guess that was. What were the things that you did? I guess over the years that kind of helped you. Um, because obviously you must have taken steps um, to help yourself kind of feel more safe with allowing more and more people to know. Like, um, like was it something where you started changing your attire or anything like that? Was it anything like that at all? A little bit. I, I think I just started dressing more androgynously. That's when I was okay. using the pronouns they, they them. them. Yep. Uh, so, and it was great. You know, I enjoyed it. You know, I just... But then eventually I got a little bit more comfortable and, and just not dressing like a woman, dressing to feel comfortable mm. in my own skin. Yeah. And that's the big thing, just being comfortable with yourself. Everyone, doesn't matter who you are. Just mm. if you can be comfortable with yourself, that's a starting point. Yeah. Uh, you know, so from there, you know, it's just... Uh, it just became a, a way of a way of life for me. It was um, January 2020 when I started um, expressing myself full time as my true self. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it's awesome. Yeah. And then two months later, COVID hit, and I went back to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a time! <laughs> Welcome to the world. Please go back to your apartment. Yeah, I was going to say it's like hello, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Too, yeah. My gosh. Anyways. So, so as someone who hasn't creeped you on LinkedIn, yeah. <laughs> what is it that you do now? Uh, I'm really fortunate. I, I work at Dalhousie University, and oh. uh, just an amazing place to work. The the team that I'm part of are so supportive. Um, it's it's just a wonderful place to land. Awesome. It's awesome. interesting. I, I I worked for Apple for a number of years, and I I loved working for Apple, and the people there were just exquisite and open and, and wonderful and but i knew at that point in time i wanted to transition and i just mm. didn't want to be doing it in a environment it was a retail environment it's a retail yeah, environment. It and i wasn't so, doing as much retail because i was working sure. behind the scenes but still i was out yeah, there yeah. and uh the staff were just wonderful i remember when i came out to the to the manager and this was months afterwards yeah he just gave me a big hug and he says Whatever I can do for you, let me know. And that's that's what it <laughs> was like. So I left Apple not because yeah. of Apple. I left Apple because I just didn't want to be in this, you know. You're lucky in a sense to have all those good people yeah. around you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like you've had some yeah. good yeah. people along hey, the way, which put, is not everyone's yeah. journey. You know, and credit yeah. yourself. You put a lot of good energy out there. Yeah. I think you always did. So, well, thank you. So I, thank yeah, you. Probably, probably helped. Right? So, yeah. So I'm very fortunate where I, both places that I work and uh, just surrounded by some wonderful, wonderful people. Awesome. That, that strive for everyone to be their best selves. Did you, um, I just wanted to ask, did you have any 
projects you have on the go or anything you wanted to tell uh just we're probably just going to wrap things up here if you're cool yeah yeah but if you no. got anything else to say well i'm working on my stand-up yeah um, okay. you know awesome. i'm i'm Seeing if there's a, a play that I like to direct. Yeah, uh, I'm still enjoying my photography. I, I like doing landscape photography. Nice. Um, and cooking, love to cook. Yeah. Oh, great. So things like that, and enjoying a good pint or a glass yeah. of wine. That's right. Yeah, and that's basically it. Why do you think a good robot? I love good robots. This place is Food awesome. Food is awesome. The, 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 the brews are really nice. The selection is good. It is. And, and it's a friendly uh, atmosphere. Always super friendly. friendly. They were yeah. so kind. Yeah. We, uh, we yeah. uh, last minute to serve a brewing couldn't have us tonight. And uh, again, these guys stepped in. <laughs> yeah, very last minute. <laughs> on, on a phone call. She's like, I'll be, I'll be ready for you. Yeah. So, yeah. so really happy that we, we came here tonight. Nice. Also, I think uh, you know, very appropriate because like Good Robot is a is a brewery that is very active in like social progression and things like that. Yeah, so I think it's I think yeah. it's good. Like as we sip here, I have them bot. You know, so they have their them bot beer, which oh, is awesome. Okay, yep, that's the try, sour. I'm gonna try, oh, it's the sour. Yeah, that's oh, the geez, sour. I don't so. like sours, guys. Maybe I'm sorry. Mike have a sour. I'm gonna try it. Out. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll drink it at the same <laughs> time. Here. Which one's the sour? That's this one here. Okay, them bot. Let's see how many. Yeah. Strange Ooh, faces cheese, we can actually cheese, cheese, cheers, cheers to them. Cheers. Oh, I don't know <laughs> about that one. It's like a friggin' uh, candy. Oh, it is, but yeah. it's like a sweet and sour kind of thing, right? Ooh, that's good. It is you good. Like it? It yeah, is good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Cheers to good robot. Cheers, cheers to good robot. robot. And thanks for being on the show, Terry. This was, this was wonderful. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you.